think it's safe to say after last night's performance, the DNC and Team Biden might want to give Joe another shot in the keister before the next debate, if he even shows up. But it's time for final thoughts. And there's no other way to say it, folks. Last night was a circus, a 2020-style circus. Yes, there was back-talking, interrupting, and name-calling. And I know the lefty spin squad is going to cry that Donald Trump was too mean and rude to slow Joe, but give me a freaking break. The man is running to be president of the most powerful and greatest nation on Earth. If he can't withstand 95 or so odd minutes of debate, how the hell is he going to face the pandemic, the economy, race relations, or anything else for that matter? And you're dang right Trump was combative, aggressive, and over-talked. He had to call Biden on his BS because the media refuses to. But that brings me to what I believe was the biggest theme of the night, moderate Joe versus woke Joe. But Joe, being a creature of the swamp with onset dementia, couldn't seem to remember if he should be a woke social justice warrior or that by golly moderate career politician from Scranton. But President Trump called his flip-flopping behind to the carpet. Joe, you agreed with Bernie Number, Sanders, who's I, I far did. left, on the manifesto, with, with we call new, it. And that gives you socialized medicine. Look, hey, Are I, you I'm not going to listen agree? to him. The fact of the matter is, I beat Bernie Sanders. Not by I'm, much. And President Trump is exactly right. Joe Biden has been nothing but a shadow candidate for the far left Marxists in charge of the Democratic Party. Yeah, Joe might think he's the Democratic Party now, but he's just the puppet they let out of the basement every now and then to trick the moderates into thinking he is one. And it wasn't until the Midwest started burning down in peaceful protests that Joe and company started preaching any semblance of law and order. And that charade is as fake and phony as the pounds of self-tanner on display last night. Law and order, my ass. In fact, it was Team Joe and Cam Cam that worked to bail out thugs and felons in the name of justice. Remember that? But every now and then, the once there moderate Joe slips back into character and tries to convince us he's all about law and order. Yes, there is. There's, sy there's sy systemic injustice in this country, in education, in work, and in, in, in law enforcement, and in, in the, in the way in which it's in, enforced. But look, the vast majority of police officers are good, decent, honorable men and women. They risk their lives every day to take care of us. But there are some bad apples. And when they occur, when they find them, they have to be sorted out. They have to be held accountable. They have to be held accountable. And I'm, not, I'm totally opposed to defunding the police officers. So let's unpack that incoherent response. He believes law enforcement is infested with systemic racism, but then tells us it's just some bad apples. So what is it, Joe? Are cops racist or not? And if you're such a big supporter of law enforcement, please do tell us what law enforcement groups support you. You can't even say the word law enforcement because if you say those words, you're going to lose all of your radical left supporters. And why aren't you saying those words, Joe? Why don't you say the words law enforcement? Because you know what? If they called us in Portland, we would put out that fire in a half an hour, but they won't do it because they're run by radical left Democrats. If you look at Chicago, if you look at any place you want to look, Seattle, they heard we were coming in the following day and they put up their hands and we got back Seattle. Minneapolis, we got it back, Joe, because we believe in law and order, but you don't. Joe, you've put yourself between a real rock and a hard place here, so it's a good thing the mainstream media will continue to cover for you and coddle your ass. The woke arm of the Democratic Party that's been pulling your strings all year isn't going to put up with you not fully and unapologetically backing Antifa and the Marxist BLM movement. But the few remaining down-home, blue-collar union workers that once supported you aren't going to put up with you and Kamala cheerleading the thugs that have been ravaging and riding our cities to the ground for the last six months. But that's not all slow Joe flip-flopped on last night. When it came to the China virus, Joe blamed Trump for putting people out of work, but in the same breath said we shouldn't reopen. What the hell? H1N1, you were a disaster. Your own chief 14, of staff said 000, you were a disaster. 14,000 people died, not 200,000. There was a no very, economic you made, recession. Like, sir, you made a, there was, far there less was no recession. Disease, you made a point. Let him answer it. And there was no one, there's no, we didn't shut down the economy. This is his economy that's being, he shut down. 
Let's get this crystal clear. It was Donald Trump who shut down travel from COVID-infested China, and it was the Democrats, including Joe, who called it xenophobic. It was Donald Trump who did and has been urging states and cities to reopen and get people back to work. It's been Democratic mayors and governors who refuse. The Democrats and their fear point have kept much of this country on lockdown for political purposes and to the detriment of their own residents. Let that be their legacy, no matter how hard they try try to gaslight. Because here in the real world, Americans want to get back to work, reopen their businesses, send their children back to actual school, have law and order in their cities, and have as little government interference as possible. But you elect Joe Biden, aka Kamala Harris, and you're going to get more control, more regulation, higher taxes, and violence and destruction disguised as justice that will only kick off a bloody and disgusting race war. Does that sound dramatic? Look around, it's already happening, and this president is the only thing standing in its way. Donald Trump takes on the media, the Marxists, the tyrants, the rhinos, the swamp, and the bullshit each and every single day, and he does it without an earpiece, a teleprompter, or a mob. The American people saw it last night, and if decimating slow Joe was rude, well, so be it. We take no prisoners because we have too much at stake, and the silent majority is ready to start fighting back. Those are my final thoughts from Nashville. God bless and take care.